I think the studios have been quite interesting, but I think importantly, they're a piece of a larger partnership that's about action, advocacy, research, intervention, and hopefully some more evaluation and reflection on the impact of the work. The studios, traditionally even a studio could be a one-off event. It could be a few months of a partnership, maybe a year. I think the, what we've designed together, the studio acts as an anchor point in an ongoing uh, action research partnership. So even between the studio courses where students do exchanges, um, or Mangano representatives come to Berkeley, uh, we've committed to, to come to Kenya to work with you uh, to do data analysis, mapping, advocacy, um, you know, work with community residents, but also work at the multiple scales of decision makers, uh, help in fundraising, multiple um, ways of being a partner. So I think, again, the studio is a piece of a larger partnership that has evolved over the years to, I think, really be about action research and interventions. It started, uh, I think, with um, the, the planning in, in Kosovo and in Mathare. And there was a lot of learning there about how an upgrade plan can enter in a very complex social, political, physical environment. Well, one outcome was a water reticulation plan for Kosovo which my understanding was eventually financed by the Athi Water Board and became a, a model that they published as the Kosovo Mathare Water Model. And importantly, I think it was about how to deliver piped water service with meters to homes, in homes, which I think was quite different than what many were trying to do for upgrading, which was ensure that there were communal taps yard taps, things like that, as opposed to the commitment to really provide the infrastructure that any middle class community would expect. And that was difficult, but we proved together that that's possible. The urban poor deserve the quality of service, of infrastructure, that anyone else in the city might expect who'd lived in a middle class uh, situation. I think it was both a physical plan, um, it had a management component that Mangano uh, implemented, uh, but it was also a social uh, or policy that showed that partnerships with slum dwellers um, could provide a new model of infrastructure um, and investment that provided service at a level that most didn't uh, try to pursue for the urban poor. So that was a, an accomplishment, I think, of that studio. We went and, and designed and uh, did the planning and, and data collection and, and uh, upgrading for the zonal plan in Mathari, which I think was another big accomplishment. That was a, really a multi-year effort that resulted in what I understand is the first ever zonal plan. So uh, the entire Mathare settlement, thinking about how things relate, infrastructure, transport, mobility, uh, social and economic issues, uh, as well as environmental that Mathari residents faced. Th and, and that plan also had a first draft of indicators to track the impacts of any upgrading strategy or, or interventions. So I think that plan had a lot of components to it that um, was quite an accomplishment that really started to change the conversation that I understand uh, in Nairobi and, and around different upgrade partners um, about the scale. Everyone's always talking about how do you scale up slum upgrading. And I think we showed with the Mathare Zonal Plan that you need, if you're going to scale up, you need a plan that shows you where you could possibly go in the future, how to in integrate informal settlements into the larger fabric of the city. Um, so it was both a physical plan with, you know, uh, roads and uh, trunk infrastructure, but it also provided, I think, um, kind of a, a political roadmap that this could be done at a, at a particular scale um, and that it could, it could change conversation. One of the conversations I think it began to change was around policy. So if a studio that happened after the zonal plan was a policy studio. So we thought after the Constitution there are many opportunities to um, 
draft policies at the national or local level that could influence um, uh, and guarantee the rights that were articulated in the, in the Constitution. So, for example, we worked on a national slum upgrading and prevention policy with our partners to try to articulate what would be the characteristics of that and what set of partners, civil society partners in particular, ought to be the lead authors and bring their local knowledge and expertise into the policy process. So I think being a partner in that studio um, helped contribute the learning from on the ground planning in places like Mathare to policy making. And I think that's also another piece that um, our partnership has and, and the Berkeley side I think has helped contribute to that, you know, not just doing small boutique projects, but thinking how do we bring this to scale and how do we um, use our data and our evidence to influence policy making. The water and sanitation program of the World Bank uh, used the Mathare water model, uh, copied it basically for their own program for the city of Nairobi. So we also got a call, a number of calls from um, UN Habitat for example and they wanted to do an open space plan for Mathare and they said hey can we use your data, can we use the zonal plan the zonal plan had kind of these cascading unintended impacts. Maybe we, they were intended all along, but they weren't uh, at first apparent from the, the completion of the plan itself, that it took some time before people started to recognize, I think, the value of it. And maybe that's a learning also in our partnership is even when we do plans or research uh, and we have a target or strategy for change, uh, and we may not reach it at our initial goal that it's important to continue the partnership and the work because uh, the changing dynamics or needs or opportunities come up where the information can be used and implemented uh, in new ways, ways that we might not have even expected when we first started.